Teeth cannot have evolved not only because they are too complex, but that they are too organized, too oriented, too ordered. All and any one of these features makes teeth non-evolvable. Most prominent theories, the clone model and the field model, neither of which is worth reviewing here because neither idea is anywhere near plausible. Why is it that when evolution runs into events that could not have taken place or biomechanical devices that could not have come about through microsteps described by Darwinian evolution, they never posit the idea that maybe these devices didn't evolve, maybe they came about by some other as yet unknown means. First let's take a look at the jaws. Jaws form a sliding ball and socket joint, a type of joint that took men tens of thousands of years to design. Go ahead and work your jaw up and down a few times there just to show how it works. The lower jaw or mandible on each side has a ball called the condyle. The skull has a corresponding socket that fits the condyle perfectly called the glenoid fossa. Mutations that made the mandible and condyles had to know what the mutations were forming in the skull that produced the glenoid fossa so they could match up and function. These were pretty smart mutations. The jaws are operated by four muscles called the muscles of mastication. Go ahead and give us another demonstration on how these muscles and the jaws work together. Do the lateral pterygoid et al., the muscles that open the mandible, know that the masseter, temporalis, and medial pterygoid muscles, the closers, were mutating and evolving? Did the muscles evolve before, after, or at the same time as the jaws? Of course, if the muscles evolved before the jaws, there would be no solid tissue to attach to or to make work. If the muscles evolved after the jaws, the mandible would have just flopped open like this. So we must assume that the muscles of mastication evolved at the same time as the jaws. Wouldn't that take organization? Wouldn't that mean intelligence? So let's move on to teeth. The back or posterior teeth are designed Oops. so that the lingual tongue side cusps on the maxillary teeth will fit exactly into the cup-like fossas of the mandibular teeth. Every groove and ridge on one posterior tooth is designed so that it fits exactly into a corresponding groove and ridge of the opposing tooth. A well-accepted paper on the evolution of teeth states that arrangements of different shapes and sizes of teeth on the two jaws are fixed and dental patterns can be reconstructed even when teeth are isolated from the jaws. Just to give you a very basic idea of what I'm talking about, this is a ridge, the mesiobuccal ridge on the upper first molar. This ridge articulates with the buccal groove and fossa on the lower first molar, the opposing tooth. This buccal groove on the upper first molar articulates with this buccal cusp of the lower first molar. The lingual cusp on the upper first molar articulates with the central fossa of the lower first molar. And the lingual groove on the upper molar articulates with the distal lingual cusp of the lower first molar. Now if you have all this down and you pass the test, you can all be dentists. The paper I cited further states that the most logical developmental mechanism for ensuring tooth development on opposing jaws is coordinated would be to use the same basic genetic mechanism that is subtly modified to produce slight differences in shape between opposing teeth. It is now clear that the mechanism and morphogenesis of teeth on different facial primordia is in fact regulated by different genetic pathways. So essentially what they're saying is that different gene pathways form the upper and lower teeth. So how and in what way could the, these genes communicate with each other so that the upper teeth would know what the lower teeth are evolving and that the lower teeth would know what the upper teeth are evolving? That could not be accomplished without organization and intelligence. Oops. Every tooth in your head has to match its opposer. So every tooth has to match each cusp to each fossa, each groove to each ridge. And I'm sorry, this is a task that could not be accomplished with random selected mutations. Of course, now that we've discussed jaws and teeth, a question arises, which evolved first, the jaws or the teeth? The paper cited states that the evolution of teeth is believed to have occurred by one of two different mechanisms. One, the teeth evolved independently from jaws from pharyngeal denticles similar to those found in many extant species of fish, such as the zebrafish. Evolution scientists think teeth may have evolved in the pharynx of early jawless fish and then may have migrated forward. Or two, teeth evolved at the same time as or after jaws by internalization of skin denticles similar to those found in modern-day sharks. So from this paper, we can clearly discern that Teeth evolved before, during, or after the evolution of jaws. Isn't real science wonderful?
I'm just wondering how teeth evolved. Did one tooth evolve on the lower arch and then later on one was evolved on the upper arch so that they could chew against each other? How about another one on the lower arch and then another one on the upper arch? Or did they all evolve at the same time? No matter how you cut it, intelligence or some sort of blueprint would be required. This is an x-ray of what's called mixed dentition. The permanent teeth are coming up exactly under the root of the deciduous or baby teeth that's pointed out by the arrows. They arise under the baby teeth with little cells preceding them called odontoclasts. The odontoclasts actually eat the root away of the baby tooth so that the baby tooth loosens up and comes out and the permanent teeth can come into position. And of course another huge question that evolution can only ignore is how could evolution possibly come up with a completely separate set of teeth that erupt before the permanent teeth? How did evolution know that the juvenile version of a species would require a smaller set of teeth first which would be replaced by a larger one that the species would grow into? That fact just makes evolution incredibly intelligent. And each permanent tooth forms down in the bone, second bicuspid to second bicuspid, each matched perfectly beneath a fully erupted deciduous tooth. How could teeth evolving and buried in the mandible match teeth forming and buried in the maxilla? Since the teeth are buried in bone while they were in early evolutionary stages, they would be tiny and useless to any species. Why would they be selected for? They couldn't bite, chew, or hold. Just another astounding trick of random mutations. The main body of the tooth is made up of a material called dentin. It's very hard material, it's slightly harder than bone. During tooth formation, dentin is laid down by little cells called odontoblasts. These cells work in incredibly organized fashion. They all start together and they all know right when to finish so that the root and the body of the tooth are perfectly shaped. Take a look at the enamel crowns of these teeth. They are astounding if you really look at them. They look like the most perfect carvings imaginable. These are made by small cells called ameloblasts little tiny cells that know just when to start and just when to stop the formation of enamel. And they all stop at just the perfect time to give us these perfect little carvings that almost look machine made. Do you evolutionauts out there want to actually tell me that some sort of mutation taught these cells when to start and when to stop their formation of enamel? And my final question for this vid is... <laughs> Did teeth evolve in a single species, or did they evolve in thousands or millions of species all at about the same time? I hope you can figure out the ramifications of this question. Bye.